begging for a team mate to get on the end of it. And what a great finish it is. Perfect body. He strikes so well. What an excellent finish. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Arlad for Set Play Gaming. This is the FIFA 23 West Brom Career Mode. It is the Road to Glory, they debut ride. Season 6, episode 129. And we are in the Carabao Cup semi-final second leg against Tottenham Hotspur coming up in two days. And basically this is our one shot at glory. Our last chance to win something before we finish this series. And we also have today a away fixture against Arsenal at the Emirates. It's more than likely that that will be mostly a rotated side, simply because we're prioritising this semi-final against Spurs. Once we finish Arsenal, we kick off February with a game against Wolves away at Molyneux in the league. Keep in mind we're still in the transfer window, so there could be some business to be wrapped up before we move on to that Wolves fixture. I, of course, will keep you updated. So, after the 1-1 draw in London, we return to the Hawthorns, and as I said in the intro, this is our one shot at glory with A.D. Boothroyd at West Brom. He promised them a title, and if he's going to do that, we have to knock Spurs out here and then beat either Liverpool or Manchester City in the final. But first, we've got to get past Spurs, and they have some fantastic players. 1-1 from the first leg, Gabriel Jesus going for a dipping shot here, six minutes in. But safe hands there from Burnt Leto. And then 11 minutes in, Daniel wide to Bravo. Claudio Bravo into Garen Kowal. Holds off his man, Garen Kowal. Neil Ducouré. Ducouré turns, edge of the box, goes for a shot, and lifts it over Nunez's bar. 13 minutes in, Kowal. Bravo on the overlap, crosses it. It's. Hooked away by the defender. Tavernier wins it. On to Ducouré. Great skill. Into Devisholu. Back into Ducouré. Out comes Nunez. Devisholu controls it. Can he get the cross in? Wide to Tavernier. Tavernier's going to pull it back here. 15 minutes. Tavernier rattles one off the crossbar. We can't get the ball in. All this pressure and no goal. Dan Neal holds off his man. Oh, and a good save from Nunez again. Spurs hold out there. And then three minutes later, Garen Kowal down the left, looking to take on Pau Torres. Cuts inside. Garen Kowal, Divisholu, completely drops Jimenez and puts it in the bottom corner. How about that for Halil Ibrahim Divisholu? Wonderful skill to drop Jimenez there. Jose Maria Jimenez, you can see this on the replay, lovely shuffle of feet, completely souls him for a hamburger for a Big Mac. And 32 minutes in, Dan Neal intercepts Pau Torres, Divisholu rides the challenge, sets up Garen Kowal, great chance, and Nunez pushes that wide. We got our tactics spot on in this game. Excellent and what a pass that is to Pedro Neto. Stroke at half time. McCrory gets back. Joshua Kimmich into Neto. Blocked. Set up nicely for Julian Alvarez. And then the header from Gabriel Jesus. Saved by the goalkeeper. We're going at half time. A goal up. 2 1 an aggregate. And then we're on the approach to the hour. McCrory wide to. Jack Stacey, Jack Stacey, through ball to Ducore. I'm thinking he's going to square this. And Nunez intercepts. Maybe should have hit that along the floor. Could have gone anywhere. And then six minutes later, Daniel wide to Claudio Bravo on the overlap. We had a good game at left back. Into Kowal, Kowal. And fouled by Pau Torres. 22 minutes left on the clock. Approaching the final 20 minutes, Jack Stacey, and so far so good, into Tavernier, Tavernier gets away from Torres, having a dreadful time, should have gone for the far corner there, went for the power shot, but went near post and Nunez knew that was going wide, and the problem here is, is that they only need to score one goal and it's suddenly 2-2 and we're on the brink again. 
77 minutes in. Stacey on the overlap to Tavernier. Plays him in. Great chance for Tavernier. Sits it up nicely. And there is Kalechi Ayanacho. 3 1 on aggregate to the Baggies. Well, here's the replay, and it's a really inviting ball played into the box. Begging players to attack it, and he makes no That's what I wanted from before when it was played in. Promising pass. And then 87 minutes in. Gabriel Jesus gets past Claudio Bravo. It's headed away and then not cleared. Alvarez sets up Jesus. And it's a near post strike. And it's 3 2. A tense and final few minutes here as Spurs try to pull this uh, deficit back. A bit disappointed that he's conceded at the front post there because maybe it's just the quickness and low. Um, strike that caught him out. Boothroyd disappointed to lose this clean sheet. And holding out here, 93 minutes. Ducore holds it up. And that is full time. Job done. Just about narrowly squeaked past Spurs. And I think we go into the final. Hopefully, with just, like I said, one chance at Silverware. Regardless of what happens, I think this is going to be the final season anyway. Uh, but it's been a superb run and we make the final let me know what you think in the comments all right so we'll just take a quick look at the Carabao Cup semi-final results City win 2-1 against Liverpool knocking them out win 4-3 on aggregate we beat Spurs 2-1 win 3-2 on aggregate so we will face Manchester City at the end of February in the Carabao Cup final at Wembley and a chance for AD Boothride to win some silverware that's exactly what we wanted. Now we go into game two and not looking forward to this at the Emirates. Arsenal away, they bombarded us with their attacking play uh, at the Hawthorns. So basically because we've just played that match against Spurs and put everything into it, this is mostly a rotated side. Just looking to try and keep the score down. Lovely touch here by Van Roy to get past Mudrick and completely sell him for a hot dog. And then um, 27 minutes in, it's still 0-0. Uh, so, so far, so good. Mudrik seeing a lot of the ball on the left-hand side. Decore allows him to go past him on the left. And so does Van Roy. It comes in. And then Decore with the interception originally. He's ran off the ball. And then Bellingham with some great strength and intercepts it, the pass and gets clear of the danger. 35 minutes in, Odegaard running to midfield, looking for a pass. Mudrik out wide again and I'm not sure why Van Roy's not tracking him further back but Ducore lets him in the cross comes in headed away by Tofolo and then headed by Kissier good save by Peacock Farrell then McMillan gets it clear here on 40 minutes still nil nil and holding out Aronia Bellingham here looking for a long pass that's a great piece of vision and creativity but unfortunately Ayanacho is offside well, he doesn't need to make his movement quite Bellingham's easy. starting to find his range a bit with his passing. I'm happy with how he's transitioned from being a rotation player to being quite a regular player for us now. 43 minutes in, Ducore blocks, wins the first tackle, wins the second one. I'm not sure how A. Nori continues with the ball there when I slide tackle. But they basically complete two successive passes, not looking at the where the ball's going. Just two back heel passes. Both find their mark to Osserman. And Osserman shoots without even looking at the goal. This kind of robo aimbot kind of thing. It looks so unrealistic. I wish they'd eliminate it from FIFA. It just You can tell that they're going to score. There's just nothing you can do to stop those back heel passes. And nothing you can do. Um... Sir Jan there, second half, trying to force it into the near post. Managed to hold our own there. It's 1 0 still. Bellingham trying to create something. Kessier trying to mark him, but Bellingham finds Ayanacho. He gets past the defender. Out comes the goalkeeper and just about stops Ayanacho there. And then 55 minutes in, Brozovic to Kessia, goes to the shot, off the crossbar, no messing about here from Tofolo, he just runs up and rows head. And then from the corner, Mudrik, a bit of overrun, tries to play it in, intercepted here and now we can break, look at this piece of 
uh, skill and passing here from Bellingham once again he's going to ping this over the top of Matip and Dean Garner's got the legs on him he gets into the box and slides it past the goalie but past the post what a chance that was for Grady Dean Garner we're just going to have a quick look at this again this is such a lovely pass a peach of a ball through and Dean Garner if anybody needed to score there it was him into the action again and intercepted McMillan gets in tries to play a pass it's a poor pass and well read Arsenal pick it up Osiman back to Odegaard back to Mudrik back to Odegaard and it's 2-0 this is one where it was hit straight at the goalkeeper and he dived sort of like in his own prone position with his hands like that I don't know whether he's kind of catch or parry it but that's poor from the goalkeeper he is quite relatively close to goal and then with 20 minutes to go it's Ossiman completely destroys uh, Alistair Barkley there and makes it 3-0 it's a brace as I said wasn't looking forward to this and now on record for our biggest defeat of the season um, I know that if you've been watching this career mode you've seen that we've done well to keep our goals against down uh, but today is just not one of those days um, you know obviously playing a rotated side away at Arsenal was always going to be asking for trouble Booz right saying where is the defending um, Rashida here into Owusu Owusu into Van Roy all he has to do here is square it he tries to lift it to the back post and it's intercepted another bad decision by Van Roy five minutes left to go Dean Garner holds him off good skill Dean Garner gets by his man Dean Garner pulls it back great chance Dean Garner and a good save by the goalkeeper we lose this one by three goals to nil not a good result but all things considered it wasn't a priority and at least we managed to rest some legs for the next match Okay, some breaking transfer news. West Brom have announced the signing of Abakar Lubade Sila from Club Bruges. They initially came in with interest on Grady Dean Garner, and as you know, we've had some contractual issues with him, and he was basically available as a free agent, so they could have signed him. I'm not sure why. They could have signed him as a free agent, but we managed to work out a deal to sign Sila. And the Grady Dean Garner has gone the opposite way. Sela is a Ivory Coast centre back, very promising, very physical as well. In all likelihood, he is going to be taking McCrory's place in the lineup. So it would be Mikalidis, O'Shea, and Sela. And then more than likely, McCrory will either drop into a midfield holding role or he might go to the rotation centre back, rotation midfield. If you tuned in last episode, you would see that we played the FA Cup round four against Wolves and we were at home. We drew 1-1. We had a 1-0 lead and let it slip. And here we are with the round four replay, taking on Wolves at Molyneux, opening two, three minutes. Ball well won and then in slides Brian and Buemo on Claudio Bravo and he goes into the book for that tackle. Not a great tackle, that is it. I'm not sure what Bruno Lage is complaining about. Still looks a very good player, but he obviously knows his own. Here, Claudio Bravo. A few minutes later, down the left-hand side, slips in Garen Kowal as he looks to take on Malo Gusto. Cuts inside, and a great chance here. And then he gets doubled up as Malo Gusto comes back and makes an interception. Does well to recover that. And then from the throw-in, Decore to Bravo who's then fouled by Malo Gusto and he sees a yellow card this is very kind when you see this on the replay this is at least a red if I do this doesn't even play the ball it's a knee high tackle that's a red card all day 15 minutes in Davisholu takes on Martinelli spins him not once but twice gets a lucky deflection goes for the bottom corner and it's a great save by Nick Pope to push it wide. Divisholu, we've seen how dangerous he can be. I had kind of a little um, okay. screen there by the defender and striker, so... 
Ducore excels into midfield, into Divisholu, spins his man. Divisholu, great skill, into the box, out slides Nick Pope and saves with his leg. 22 minutes in, we look like we've got this one. We just need to convert one of these chances. Tavernier takes on Tagliafico, beats him for pace. And here comes Tavernier, drops the shoulder past Martinelli. When he can't find the shot, it's a poor shot in the end from Marcus Tavernier. Second half action, just need to convert one of our chances. You get the feeling that if we don't, we're going to get punished. And here it is on the overlap, Chiquinho just about manages to get in behind Michalidis. And O'Shea cannot get across quickly enough to cover that gap. And Chiquinho makes it 1-0 to Wolves. Lovely pass from Musa Barrow to play him in. And Wolves have a 1-0 lead. You'll know as well that this particular game, this particular fixture, is seen as a, a rival match between these two sides. So, extra incentive. 53 minutes in. Tries to play it in there. Garen Kowal loses it. And then Neil, Dan Neil does really well here to hold off Nico Gonzalez. Plays a 1-2 with Decore into the box. Runs past the last man, Rob Agnoli, and slides it past Nick Pope. Dan Neil equalises. They weren't behind for long. Silence is Molyneux there. Nice bit of skill by the midfielders linking up. Runs into the box and he usually doesn't finish that well. That's a nice finish from Dan Neil. 65 minutes in. Can we get the go-ahead goal? Sends it wide. Divisholu Taver Tavernier drops the shoulder away from Martinelli. Pings it into Garen Kowal who holds off Malo Gusto. And there's a shot. What a save that is from Nick Pope. Leno with the save. 21 minutes to go. He's going to send this long. And it's going to be headed on, flicked on by Divisholu into Decore. Great chance here. Slides in. Tavernier sends it up. It's blocked. And brings it down. And what a tremendous volley that was from Ducore. Tipped over by Pope. Then from the corner, Mikalidis' header cleared off the line by Malo Gusto. We just can't seem to get the ball in the net. Ducore. 73 minutes in, flicked on, Neil into Therese Campbell, oh and a save, it pops out and he tries to squeeze it in, but Therese Campbell cannot finish that chance. It looks like we're going to go to penalties guys, 77 minutes in, Marlo Gusto into Brian and Buemo, a counter here by Wolves, a chance to go 2-1 up and it's Musa Barrow who punishes Punishes us for that poor piece of defensive play as we're caught out on the counter-attack. And Musa Barrow has made it 2-1 late here with only about 10 minutes left. Well, let's see this again. The vision to play this through ball is superb. And then the finish is fairly simple in the end. That's a good goal. To do something positive quickly. Wonderful tackle here by McCrory. Dispossesses Wang Yi Chan. And now Stacey on the overlap. Into Decore, great chance. Into Ayanacho, into Therese Campbell. Great chance off the post. How close can you get? Five minutes left. And that is full time. We are knocked out of the FA Cup after two hard fought matches against Wolves. I think the games have just caught up to us at this point of the season, playing two or three matches back to back like that. Fair play to the lads, they gave it everything. And um, we'll be disappointed to go out, but. We can't dwell on this and we've got to get back to league action. Alright, that's it from me today. I will be back in two days on Saturday with episode 130, as you can see from the calendar. We will be finishing February's schedule, which includes the Carabao Cup final against Manchester City. And if you'd like to continue to support me on the channel, please continue to do so by watching anything from the playlist available at the end of this video. Until then, make sure you'll take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys soon. It's our lad for set play gaming.